Professor Gary Jennings, a cardiologist and Chief Medical Advisor with the Heart Foundation. It's my great, very great pleasure to welcome you to this webinar, um, Prediction in Practice, uh, which we hope will be a practical guide to applying the new Australian Cardiovascular Disease Risk Calculator. Health professionals haven't had anything to help to improve their assessment of, of the risk of cardiovascular disease since 2012 when the absolute risk guidelines were released. A lot's happened uh, since then. We've got a lot better evidence. We know a lot of other factors that impact on, on people's risk. Um, so it was important to develop a new guideline and within that guideline there's a calculator. The calculator updates what was used in the 2012 guideline, which came from Framingham data, a small town in, in New England, and was uh, decades old. Um, and we know that uh, the demographics of people at high risk are very different now to what they were uh, 20, 30, 40 or 50 years ago. And also the population uh, within Australia is different to that from uh, from uh, a suburb of, of Boston uh, some time ago. So there was a real need to update uh, not just the calculator but the guideline as a whole to make sure that we've got the right people being assessed, to make sure they're getting the right information as far as their risk is concerned and to make sure that they're getting the right management if they're assessed as being high or intermediate risk. There's been a great emphasis on communicating risk in a way that's appropriate to uh, to consumers, and I've already talked about the overlay as far as First Nations people input was concerned. Uh, there are a number of new things that are brought into, um, into play in the guideline, of which pregnancy complications is only one. There are things like socioeconomic factors, um, and mental health, um, a range of other things. And I think the, we'll the calculator about itself in involves uh, the standard risk factors. There are about there are twelve, so they're more than in the previous um, guideline, but they are the sort of standard things that we think uh, are associated with with heart disease and measurements of blood pressure, cholesterol, tobacco, whether you've got diabetes, etc. Um, but there are also a series of reclassification factors, so that the health professional, having got a figure out of the calculator, can adjust it up. A down and it's according to things like ethnicity, uh, severe mental illness, uh, uh, advanced kidney disease, family history or even the results of other tests which aren't part of the uh, routine guideline like coronary artery calcium screening. And then when they go on to management the recommendations involve um, management of smokering, uh, nutrition, physical activity, healthy aging, I mean sorry healthy weight, alcohol, um, um, and then there's the standard clinical things like managing blood pressure, lowering cholesterol, etc., manage, managing um, uh, diabetes. Now, you can't do that alone. Uh, that's best done with a team-based approach. It's best done by bringing in other kinds of resources, whether it's um, uh, in the practice uh, nurses, whether it's uh, allied health support, whether it's other agencies that provide services like, um, like tobacco um, control. So uh, we do see this as something which leads into a discussion with the patient, a, a, um, an agreement with the patient about what the important things are to tackle and then bringing in all the, the resources that the um, Australian health system and beyond can provide, including social services. So what does this mean for um, those, of us, those of you in primary care? Um, it means targeting your heart disease screening to the right parts of the population, that is those who benefit most from it, uh, accurately predicting risk uh, and therefore t making sure that those that get pharmacotherapy are those that are going to likely benefit the most. Uh, a more comprehensive risk assessment uh, and a facilitation of shared decision making uh, to make sure that we get patient engagement often when we're trying to tell people with no symptoms at all that they might need lifetime management um, uh, and even pharmacotherapy. And it supports the best practice management of cardiovascular risk. Well, the guideline itself is over 150 pages. We don't expect every healthcare professional to read that. And for that reason, the Heart Foundation's developed a whole lot of additional resources, all of which are available on the um, on the Heart Foundation website. And uh, they will allow people, healthcare professionals, and I don't just mean um, 
medical practitioners. Uh, this is about team-based care. Uh, I think a lot of this will be done by nurse practitioners. It needs the support of allied health because there are a lot of recommendations about things like nutrition and diet, physical activity, uh, smoking, etc. All of those things need to be um, brought into the um, uh, management of people that are at high risk or, or, or intermediate risk based on this assessment. This was led by the Australian Chronic Disease Prevention Alliance and funded by the Australian Government. The uh, Australian Chronic Disease Prevention Alliance uh, involves the Heart Foundation, which, uh, which organised and led the, uh, the development of the guideline, uh, the Stroke Foundation, the Kidney Foundation, Diabetes Australia, uh, and and cancer and can the cancer councils are also involved. So it was just looking at um, cardiovascular disease in its broadest sense, uh, and uh, we know that, for example, kidney disease is um, is uh, an important contributor, as indeed is diabetes to cardiovascular disease. You can't separate them. We also know that the same risk factors, essentially, for coronary disease also affect people with stroke. So uh, it was very important that we had involvement of all those organisations. But it went far broader than that. Um, the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners was very much involved and contributed. Uh, we had input from uh, many, many consumer organisations. We had a special uh, committee uh, consumer o overlay on the um, uh, on, on the on the guideline itself, uh, we had indigenous considerations at every point in the development of the guideline. Uh, we had uh, consultation with um, uh, many many hundreds of uh, uh, healthcare professionals and their organisations, as well as uh, the broader consumer uh, community in Australia. So it's been a joint effort and something that uh, really everybody everybody's contribution has been important. Uh, it involved expertise from nine advisory groups, uh, very multidisciplinary, uh, 10 clinical specialties were represented, uh, and over 20,000 health professionals and uh, almost 200 stakeholder groups, as well as many, many consumers were invited and, and many did give feedback. This guideline is, was released a, a few months ago and we've been very both surprised and delighted with the up, uptake. It's not yet embedded into GP practice software where it will be most easily used in future and we expect the major uptake to take place. But we've already had hundreds of thousands of people using the guideline through the online calculator. So uh, I think we've got every indication that it is both acceptable and useful and will be used, uh, particularly if we can put it into the context of an overall national health screening uh, program. We can expect um, a one and a half million people to have a heart event in the, uh, before 2029, before the end of this decade, and that's going to bring a, a, a cost burden that, that, which is enormous, probably in the order of $150 billion. Uh, we know that heart disease is largely preventable, as indeed is stroke and, and many of the other manifestations that will be affected by um, uh, application of this guideline and the management that follows, uh, so that we can expect to see a very substantial reduction in um, in uh, both heart disease, stroke, uh, atrial fibrillation, heart failure, uh, perhaps uh, uh, kidney kidney problems, um, uh, and the, and some of the manifestations of, of diabetes too. In the future, we're having at present about twenty thousand. Uh, heart attacks and cardiovascular events each year, uh, uh, sorry, deaths, and about 50,000 events. Uh, uh, in theory, if we could implement this and have it applied broadly across primary care, we could reduce that by two-thirds, three-quarters, two-thirds or so, three-quarters.